Right, here it is. Hi guys. I'm walking around here trying to find a place that I've been maybe about a year ago. And I once noticed here a very special thing here and I'm going to show you that. And also it demonstrates a type of navigation that is a bit harder to, uh, to explain really. And that is because it's navigation purely by nat uh, nature awareness. Yeah, this was the, the place I was looking for and as you see here, I got two things. I got shaga on this uh, birch tree here and also this fungi and you see down here as well but I don't think that will show on the camera and uh, I don't really know the real name for it I have to look that one up and I will caption you on that but uh, I tend to call this knife dropping fungus and this is excellent stuff to sharpen your knife or to, to strop your knife uh, basically it's like magic if you cut this through half and just give a few strokes on both sides of your knife you will, you will notice an enormous difference these two things, both the shaga and the knife stropping fungus are very rare in this area here in uh, where I live. It's very hard to find them. Sometimes you do. And in this case I kind these kind of things I tend to remember. And uh, like I told you, just walking through the woods somewhere and finding back a, a thing like this it's really hard to explain and I, I can't really do it myself actually explaining how this works uh, it, it is based on that when I've, I've always had that, that when I come into some place I somehow register my the way I come in, the path I come in, I see the surroundings, I see trees it doesn't matter it's the same in a city for, my, for me but uh, it can be years in between and I will still remember and recognize things um, sometimes it can be harder between seasons if you come in the summer and all of a sudden there's a lot of snow and a lot of the small trees are gone I notice that you sometimes have to look a bit harder because uh, you also register all the small details and they might have disappeared under the snow the same thing the other way around if for the first time you find something and that be in the uh, in the winter you can have a hard time finding it back in the summer but there are still a lot of hints and things that is not I can't really rationalize it, but they register unconsciously. And when you see these things on your way in, you, you will start following some kind of mental path towards where you want to be. And uh, the key to that is nature awareness and how you perceive the things around you. If you just go around and say, oh, nice trees, that doesn't work. You have to be able to see every detail in a tree and register and put it in a place and uh, you can train it, you can't teach it, you can just, everybody has it to some degree and uh, uh, yeah what I tend to do on nature, nature awareness courses is to to try to bring that out in people and uh, somehow develop it. It's not a knowledge that you can really teach, it is something that you can develop in, in every person. And if we just uh, pan around here, you see there are a lot of things here that, that might register. For instance, that little tree there. We can zoom in on that. You see the bark has been stripped by moose. And then just panning a bit further, You will see this kind of a, almost a statue, this old roots of a, of a long dead tree. And that kind of thing tend to, to register as well. I kind of often see weird trees or weird dead trees and, and recognize them. Also around here, I don't know if that's visible because it's pretty dark. There are a lot of birch trees around here and an area with a lot of birch trees in itself is pretty uh, yeah, different from what you normally would find with all the pine.
and then there you have a very special birch tree that has that's more like a yeah a lot of trunks upwards and it's that kind of things that that will register and kind of pinpoint the place right so obviously uh, nature awareness is a pretty uh, important thing in uh, in, in navigation uh, in the wilderness but uh, that's of course not enough I always tend to have a compass on me and uh, I find myself not using it that much I use it to find the cardinal directions and uh, of course when I'm specifically using a map to find stuff I use a compass quite a lot of course to, to constantly keep my bearing straight and and walk on to where I want to be but just when I want to have a, a general direction I'm not constantly using my compass and uh, if you don't have a compass and you need to find uh, the cardinal directions that can be a bit hard of course you can use the Sun you can use the stars you can use the position of ant hills and uh, and the form of the trees uh, they tend to for instance to be a bit more heavy on the south side if you find a tree stump you will see that on the rings the rings are more compressed and 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 all that kind all that kind of stuff but you need to know one direction at least and uh, quite often the Sun is a good one for instance now it's completely cloudy overcast it's very hard you don't see a sun so one trick that you can, can use is if you look at this very cloudy sky you know you see because it's quite quite light up there that the Sun is there but you don't see it specifically if you would really want to see the Sun but what you can do if it's not too cloudy is to close your eyes almost to 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 uh, yeah how would you say it uh, almost close your eyes and you will kind of filter out the Sun and you will see the ball of the Sun through the clouds that's of course if it's not too cloudy but then of course the, the Sun will give you a greater indication of uh, of the cardinal directions provided you have a time so I quite often have a, a normal watch on me and the position of the Sun combined with the time will give you great indication of of the directions because everybody knows that the Sun will rise in the east and set in the west so how does the Sun give us the cardinal directions well everybody knows the Sun rises in the east and sets in the west and uh, it takes some time to see it travel from the east to the west of course we are spinning around our axis causing this effect but it it is like the Sun would travel across the sky and knowing that this happens every 24 hours it's easy to see that every hour the Sun will move with about will not with about will exactly 15 degrees in the sky so this gives a, a fantastic idea of time time uh, progressing because if you see the Sun and you know where East is then you can fairly easy find out how much time has passed since the Sun rose more importantly it's much more important to know how much time is left until the Sun sets usually in a survival situation for instance you would be very interesting to know how long do I have daylight left and uh, do I have time to make a certain type of shelter or not and uh, using the Sun for that is great but it, it, it poses the question how do I measure the angles how do I measure 15 degrees you can use one of the oldest uh, units that, that, that mankind has used and that's called the hand span if you look at your hand and you would spread it as much as you can doesn't matter which one like this you spread it as much as you can and then stretch out your arm in front of you as much as you can the most 
most people will have from this point to this point the angle of the of the view is between 25 and 15 degrees of course you have to calibrate that but it's really nice because you're using your own body as a, as a kind of a measuring device and of course you yourself are built to certain proportions that won't change uh, strangely enough a lot of these proportions are quite the same between between all the humans as well for instance the the size, the, the distance between the two eyes and the length of your arm is about 10. And that is something that is pretty universal. That can be used to, to uh, estimate distances, and I will come back to that later. But first, the hand span. You have to calibrate, and I will show you how you calibrate your, the angle in your hand span. But also, the, the angle between the knuckles is usually half the angle of the hand span and the individual angle between the knuckles itself are a fifth of that again so you can use this to, to measure angles although it's all qu quite coarse it gives indications and it's, it's, it's a good help so how do you, how do you calibrate uh, and find the, the, the angle that you as, a, as an individual have between your thumb and your little finger. I will show you that. That is actually pretty much like calibrating uh, an electronic compass or uh, that, that you find in a GPS. What you do is you stretch out your hand as much as you can because consistency is really important here. You stretch out your hand, your thumb and your little finger as much as you can and you put your thumb align that with some tree that you know of, that you see there. And then you look where your little finger is and you put your thumb there. And then you go around like that. And counting yeah, how many hand spans you have. And you will do this until you totally went round. Well, that was 22. So I got 22 hand spans in 360 degrees. So now I only have to do the math. Luckily my phone has a calculator, so... <laughs> that gives me a 16.36. So I would say 16.4. And if you use just 16, that would be okay, or 16 and a half. So this can be, can be very different for all kinds of people because it, it depends on the length of your arm, uh, how much of an angle you get. If you, if you pull your arm back, it will get a bigger and bigger ar uh, angle. If you have a very long arm, it will be smaller. So with this knowledge that um, my hand span will actually give me an angle of 16.4 degrees. I can very easily determine the time to sunset uh, by finding the sun, which is unfortunately now pretty much impossible because there is so much clouds. But when you find the sun, you would just count from the sun how many hand spans you have until you are in the point where it would set in the west. Again, I have to, as so often with navigation stuff, I have to add a little note here. Uh, I am here above 61 degrees uh, latitude, which kind of uh, is a problem, <laughs> because the sun will set past the west. And uh, when it's about the 24th of June, it will, it will almost go to, to yeah, northwest. And it won't, be, it won't be even getting dark here. And if you're even higher up, if you get to the pole cir circle, the pole circles, the sun will actually be at its lowest point above the horizon, exactly at the north. 
So you have to take into consideration where you are on the globe, of course, and being at yeah, 60, 61 degrees and higher poses all kinds of, of problems that I've, uh, I've talked about earlier. It's the same with the st uh, shadow stick method and other, other kinds of, of navigation mm -hmm. tricks. You can actually determine all kinds of angles. And it's really nice because uh, it's not just only for using with the sun. You can set off a, a bearing from, from a known direction. You can use it to determine the slope of a hill. I mean, you don't have to go horizontal. You can also look at it vertically. And you can actually set, estimate the, the, the angle of a slope. That can be quite interesting in, in, in all kinds of, of, of navigation or determining the route and whatever. Not. So, a very useful technique indeed. A lot of these things is using your body as the actual instrument to measure with. And if you have a direction, a, a baseline that you know of, maybe you even have a wall or a fence or whatever, but say that you just have the line, you put your arms on that baseline like this and try to get a good balance of that direction. Put something in the line of sight on that side with your arm and on that side and keep it that way. And then if you want to make a 90 degrees angle on that, you stretch out your arms and where the tips of your finger meet and the line between your nose and that point, that of course is 90 degrees. It's not enormously accurate, but it's amazingly accurate. So now imagine that we have this baseline, which is a direction towards the north in that way. So that way is north. But you actually want to move or walk in a southeasterly direction. So there's a really nice trick for that. I mark, mark this origin point here with a little stick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk five paces in a northerly direction. Then I'm going to take out 90 degrees towards the east and I take another five paces in that direction. So I will do that now, following this line. One, two, three, four, five. Here I'm at five paces and I'm going to take out a 90 degrees angle towards the east. One. Two, three, four, five. So now I'm here, five paces from the baseline, and the line that I have to my origin point is now actually pointing southwest, or in that direction, northeast. And why is that? Because five paces that way, and five paces 90 degrees will give me an angle of 45 degrees. And uh, you can make actually a little table with that. You can make what happens with three steps and four to the side and one steps and 20 to the side. Uh, what you have to do is you take the, the distance that you walk to the side per perpendicularly and divide that with the number of steps you took on the original direction and then you will have the tangent of the angle. So that, that maybe is a bit mathematical, but it will give you all the angles you want. And you can get, you just write some down or learn from, from your head some very useful ones, like maybe the ones for 45, 30 and 15 degrees. And then in that way you can use this, this method very easily while on the move. Right, so just using Using your brain, using your body, can give you quite a nice tool in navigating. So, I hope you like this uh, maybe slightly theoretical stuff, but uh, it's a really great help when you're out in nature and uh, try to navigate. It's really nice to train that before you actually need it, of course. And uh, on our courses we uh, go way deeper into this and do a lot of training and exercises and so on. Also to, uh, to hone your nature awareness skills. 
and uh, also on the nature awareness track of our courses it, it is, this has a lot of uh, focus so that's all for me now i hope you liked it see you all in the next one guys